Hey, welcome back. In this video, let's look at some of the default configuration of Django. Let's open this settings.py file and the first and foremost you see right here is this base underscore dir. This is actually getting your root directory dynamically. Okay, so in my case, what is my root directory? It is nothing but this Django basic. Okay, so in your case, it could be different. So that's why Django is dynamically uh, accessing your root directory using this code all right and as the name suggests it is a secret key and it should be kept secretly secret keys are used to uh, generate hashes okay so hashing is basically the process of encrypting certain data so that it could not be readable or understandable by humans okay so you must be wondering why this secret key is starting with uh, django insecure well it's actually a default secret key that was generated by the django and it starts with django's insecure hyphen and then this uh, 50 digits uh, secret key all right and it's actually the Django's way of telling you that the secret key which is directly entered into this settings.py is an insecure key. Okay, for the security reasons, you should always keep your secret key in a secret place. In the later stages of this course, I will show you practically how you can keep this secret key safe. All right, and let's move forward. Next comes is this debug is equal to true. Right. It's a boolean value. By default, this debug is set to true in the development server. When I said development server, it just means that as a developer, you're working on this project and running it on the local server. Okay, so as you can see, we are running this project on local server, which is 127.0.0.1.8000 is a port number. Okay, so this is what we call the development server. Okay. Since you are a developer, you want to see any errors or warnings on your web page while you are working on it. So that's why you set debug is equal to true. But in the production server after deployment, you don't want to show any errors to the live users, right? And it also shows some sample code, URL patterns and all that. So you should not expose it to the public. In that case, you should actually set debug is equal to false. As you can see, security warning don't run with the debug turned on in productions all right in the production always remember you should never ever set debug is equal to true on the production server always set it to false on production all right and then allowed host well in this allowed host you enter the domain names of your website where you want to run your project all right even if you keep it blank on the development server you will not receive any errors but in the production server you must actually put your ip address I mean the server IP address or the domain name. Otherwise, you cannot run this project. An app is actually a package with the Django modules. These modules are used to perform business logic. All right. A Django project can have multiple apps. With these multiple apps, you can create reusable components based on what type of logic you are writing. Okay. We have not created any apps yet, but we'll definitely create one in the next lecture but whenever you create an app in the django project you must register that app name in this installed apps section okay so more about apps in the next lecture all right and the middleware is used to perform the various functions in your application uh, these functions can be security sessions form production and authentication etc okay so django provides uh, various inbuilt uh, middlewares and it also allows us to create our own custom middlewares however we will not go too deep into creating uh, custom middlewares in this course just have a look at some of the inbuilt middlewares of django that you know that makes developers life easy right and then root url conf so this actually tells that the main url configuration resides in this part my site dot uh, urls that means that this url config is actually inside this my site folder and then urls.py okay here you don't need to actually write the file name it is actually saying that inside the my site uh, folder we have a module called urls okay so that's what it is and then uh, templates uh, this configuration is responsible for rendering the front end templates all right so this configuration tells django that from where the wsj application should run okay so here it is saying my site dot wsgi dot application this actually means that inside the my site package 
we have a module called WSGI. This is the one. And inside that WSGI module, we have something called application. Okay, here you can see application is a variable which is actually calling get WSGI application. This is a little bit you know advanced stuff. You don't need to understand it right now as a beginner, but just know that this is actually the server configuration. Okay, and then we have this databases. All right, as you know, this is the default SQL at three database configuration. We can always edit this configuration to use MySQL or Postgres or any other databases. Right by default, we use uh, SQL 3 database, and then we have uh, auth password validator. These are the built in password validators, uh, comes with the Django by default. Okay, so these validators are used to check the strength of the user's password. All right, and then we have this internationalization. So, here we actually put the language code. Maybe uh, by default it comes with the English and US. You can just uh, Google the language code if you want to change it and uh, you can write it or update it accordingly. And then we have this time zone. If you, you know change the time zone of your Django project, you can do it from here. UTC is the default time zone of the server. All right. And use I18N. This I18N means that if you want to use internationalization in your project, then you set it true okay so internationalization is actually the way of uh, changing your languages okay so you might have seen so many websites have diff you know english language arabic language and you know different kind of language right in that case if you want to create a project with the multiple languages by default it is actually true all right so and then uh, use time zone tz is actually time zone okay just set it to two you don't need to actually touch these things all right and then we have a static url so whatever the css javascript and image files we use in the website are called static files okay in django you need to make a special configuration for running the static files so i have made a dedicated video on the static files so for now let's not worry about it all right and then we have this default auto field so this is actually set to the big auto field it just means that the primary key field type will be big auto field uh, don't worry if you don't understand this because uh, when we create apps and when we work with the models then you'll understand what is this big auto field and what is care field and all that stuff okay so this is just the you know the default configuration that comes with the django installation all right and from the next video we will actually focus on apps and how to work with them all right thank you